Hello friends, I'm Brenda Crouch. I believe the winds of global change compel us to the mysteries that speak to path and purpose. In a time of amplified chaos, there is a divine compass to navigate the conditions that drive our everyday decisions. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore stories and the knowledge of sojourners who will point the way to the secrets that lie before us. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome, everyone. If you're struggling with any kind of a health issue, uh, anxiety issue, um, any kind of issue that might be affecting you and your performance in life, I want you to hang on and and be with me for our guest today because I'm excited about the fact that she has so much knowledge packed in not only her education, but her experience and her journey to health and wellness. That is our topic for today, the journey to health and wellness. This is a, a friend of mine who I met through my own physical ailments and problems, and I was so uh, delighted and honored to meet Dr. Elizabeth Hafer. She has helped me with my own journey, and she's helped people who struggle even with ADD, autism, many physical injuries and traumas, and I want you to meet her today, but first, let me just read a little bit about her. Uh, Dr. Hafer earned her Doctor uh, of Chiropractic degree, Bachelor of Science and Associate of Science in Chiropractic Technology at Palmer College of Chiropractic. She is board certified by the California Board of Chiropractic Examiners and serves as an X-ray supervisor through the California Department of Health's Radiologic Health Branch. She holds certification with the National Board of Chiropractic Examiners, and she currently serves as the Chair of the House of Delegates for the California Chiropractic Association. Uh, with uh, She has such an extensive and advanced training in chiropractic, which serves her well and her patients in her passion to serve them in their lifestyles and help them to live their best lives. She is a public speaker, she is a trainer, and she's a lover of Jesus. And that's one of the reasons I love her so much. She's helped me with my own personal journey. I consider her a dear, dear friend. And I wanna welcome you today, Dr. Elizabeth Hafer. Thank you for being with me. I am so excited to be here, Brenda. <laughs> It's so funny. Whenever I hear somebody read my bio, I'm like, wow, that lady sounds really important. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have to interject here that I cut about three fourths of that out because it was so long and I want to give you time to talk, but you, it's extensive and exhaustive. All of the, the list of all that you are doing and, and where you're serving and uh, your education. And what I'm excited about is the fact that what you do in the chiropractic field is very different and very unusual from what most general chiropractic services um, offer. Yes. And so we're gonna talk about that today, but you have a personal story that actually led you. So I wanna back up just a little bit and uh, you have such an amazing story of your own healing. Um, healing on many levels, yes. uh, we're all complex creatures. And so this involved emotional healing, it involved physical healing from traumas. And uh, I want you to just, I wanna open the door right now for you to just talk about where all this started and where you once were and what God has brought you to today. I am so excited to share my testimony because I've heard it said so many times, but where there are tests, there are testimonies and where there are messes, there are messages. So right. I have a testimony and I have a message and it is of truth and redemption and restoration and God is a healer and he is a provider. And so it's really awesome that today is the day that we're doing this interview because when I woke up this morning, um, I was looking forward to this and I also realized Today is the 14th anniversary of the first Blair correction that I received when I was a student. And oh. so it's the anniversary of my healing. So I think it's so wow. and completely God to be able to set this up on today so that I could brag about his goodness and his faithfulness mm -hmm. and talk about what he did in my life. So how it started was that um, I had a really tumultuous childhood. My mother, biological mother, uh, abandoned us, my brother and I. Christmas 1982. And I grew up in a home that, you know, at best I was tolerated. And so mm -hmm. there was physical abuse, emotional abuse. I was removed from my father's home at the age of 14 by the state of Iowa. 
And um, when I was 17, I was on my own. And so you can imagine the emotional damage and the um, struggle that I had as a young woman trying to figure sure. out how to make life work. And I had no um, interest in ever going to college. I wanted to be a singer on Broadway. I had a lot of talent. I had a lot of gifting in that regard. I used my gifting a lot, actually, as a teenager. Um, I had such talent that the local voice instructor that kind of trained all the kids in the area took pity on me. And she offered me free voice lessons because I had such talent that she didn't want to see it get wasted. But because of my brokenness and because of my inability to really know who I was, I chose a boy over all the things. And that <laughs> pregnant at 18. And I wow. found homeless when I was pregnant, literally living in my car. My friend's parents took pity on me and let me stay in their basement for a short period of time. Um, and just offered me a, a warm place to live. Because if you haven't lived in Iowa in winter, it is no joke. And I was pregnant mm-hmm. during that time. Um, I had my first daughter 22 years ago in July. And so um, I went from being a homeless person pregnant teenager to having an incredible career and an incredible life in Southern California. And it's because of God's grace and his mercy and his calling on my life. And I used education as a route to see myself out of the mess that I was in. And I'd always been a good student and I always had promise in education. I just never had anybody telling me that I could do it. And a good friend of mine her, her name's Beth. Her mother was the supervisor at Palmer College of Chiropractic. And she offered me a part-time job working at the clinic, checking in patients, um, kind of like what my staff does when you come to see me. And yeah. I had health and I had structure and I had stability in that little part-time job. I think I made like six bucks an hour when I first started. And she basically told me, why don't you work here until you figure out what you want to do with your life. Well, having that job led to the most incredible opportunities for me to see health and healing in chiropractic. I grew up in Davenport, Iowa, where chiropractic was founded, but I didn't understand it as a lifestyle. I didn't understand it as a career opportunity. I just knew that if I had a headache or my back hurt, I saw my chiropractor. Yeah. So when I- I sat there and saw people come in and and realized how quickly these things were happening. And I saw these students that were dedicating their life to this profession. I was like, what is this? There's something more. And that's what led me to getting the associate degree because I thought I could be an assistant. I could help these students. I could help these doctors. And then halfway through that program, I realized very quickly that I wanted to know more. I wanted to know why and how. And I certainly didn't want to be somebody's assistant the rest of my life. I have a pretty big personality and I wanted to be the boss. So I... (laughs) I got my associate's degree, I got my bachelor's degree, and then I entered into the doctor of chiropractic program, and I was on my way to being an entrepreneur. Little did I know that the depression and the anxiety and the suicidal thoughts that I had had that had plagued me my entire life would come raging at me when I was in that program. And I literally suffered for 14 years every day with the thought of wanting to die. And Mm. one of the things that kept me going was my daughter. And the reason why was because I knew what it felt like to be abandoned by my mother. And I did not want to do it for her. I did not want her to have that experience. And even though I lived with debilitating, crushing anxiety and horrible depression, and um, to the point where I couldn't get out of bed some days, Mm -hmm. I always had angels around me. God literally sent people into my life that protected me from myself most of the time, wouldn't let me stay in bed, wouldn't let me skip class, wouldn't let me make an excuse for myself because there was a hundred different times that I wanted to do that. Mm. And um, when it came time for me to start to think about what I was going to do with my future, I was a year away from graduating from Palmer as a doctor. And Mm. I knew that chiropractic worked. I knew that it helps people feel better. And I saw that and I lived vicariously through that. But I knew that I couldn't sell it and I knew that I couldn't have success in it as an entrepreneur if it didn't help me. And it got me to the point where I wasn't taking any medication because I had been on everything. Mm. It got me to the point where I was able to get through my day, but I was still suffering tremendously on the inside. I got saved when I was 24. And that was right before I started my doctor of chiropractic program. God just literally saved my life and showed me who I was in him. And it wasn't for another three years that I got this life-saving upper cervical correction. And on October 27th, 2000, mm. God healed my mind through a Blair upper cervical correction. Me and my best friend told me, I haven't seen you try this upper cervical work. You've said you've done everything. You haven't done everything. You haven't tried this. And I was a super skeptic. I'd been under chiropractic care my whole life. 
more specifically, more than ever during my training as a chiropractor. And I actually was, I made fun of upper cervical doctors. I said, you know, how could they be so dogmatic? How could one bone at the top of your neck make such a huge difference? Yeah. But I also recognized wisdom and I saw that she was right. I hadn't tried it. And so I couldn't necessarily, you know, talk about it if I hadn't submitted myself to it. So I did. I submitted myself to the student clinic. I let the student do the correction. The doctor observing um, was able to identify the misalignments that I had in my in my spine that were different from another analysis mm -hmm. that had been done. And literally in an instant, my entire life changed. I wow. saw brighter. I saw, I heard sounds clear. I had hope in my mind for the first time in my life. And I knew from that moment forward that I had to spend the rest of my life giving mm. this hope back to people. And I know sure. that God healed me to mm. heal his people. So <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's great. He saved my so, okay. So, so let's take that, that concept of an upper cervical um, adjustment, right? I want you to unpack that, explain what that means and the difference from, you know, most of us have had experiences or have heard about experiences with chiropractors where you do the big neck crack and, yep. and it's pretty traumatic experience for a lot of people that are kind of fearful of that. And, and maybe in some cases even dangerous, I don't know. Uh, but now I've done traditional chiropractic my whole life. And, and I was grateful for that, that there were many, uh, situations where it has helped me, but I've never experienced anything like I've experienced with you in treating the upper cervical. And that's not to say that you don't treat the other parts of the body right. as they need help, but explain to us why this is so important and how that, um, you know, it's like control center just can't do its work when right. they're, when that's out of alignment. So uh, a basic understanding of anatomy is that your head sits on top of your neck, your head weighs about 12 pounds, and your neck and the little tiny couple ounce atlas bone is literally mm -hmm. balancing that 12 pound bowling ball. And so mm -hmm. when damage happens or when misalignment occurs or when you've had an injury, and it could be a physical injury, a really terrible mental event, a psychological abuse or something happens, a chemical event, maybe you had to have chemotherapy or maybe you got poisoned from a medication wow. and you, all kinds of things. When that happens, it causes your neck to get stuck out of alignment. And then that diminishes the ability for your brain to communicate for the rest of your body. And the channel that that happens through is your brainstem, which becomes your spinal cord, and then all the nerves that innervate every single cell in your body. So what I do is I very specifically engineer a correction based on the unique anatomy that's inside of your neck. I have really incredibly advanced um, imaging called a cone beam CT that I use. It truly produces a three-dimensional image of the spine, and I'm able to draw up or engineer a correction on a blueprint that is your body. So there's no guessing. And back to traditional chiropractic, if it didn't work, we wouldn't be a profession. We were born right. on that premise. And Dr. Palmer, who is the uh, advancer, Dr. BJ Palmer, the advancer of chiropractic, the developer of it, saw that the more specific you can become, the less is more with the nervous system. So we don't want to be aggressive. We don't want to um, do a bunch of adjustments every single time you come in. And that's why you, Brenda, have experienced the difference. And full spine wow. chiropractic works. And I do that as a support to the very specific upper cervical adjustments that I do in the neck that are based on the anatomy that you were created in. Because just like a fingerprint, everybody's adjustment is different because everybody's yeah. anatomy is different. And that's the premise that I work from is that Everybody has asymmetry. There's no two things that are the same. And I get to design almost like a snowflake or a fingerprint, an individual custom correction to tailor exactly what the patient needs in that moment. And that is the most rewarding thing because when we get to do those corrections and I get to lay my hands on those people, their lives transform, yeah. they're healed. Yeah. You've said that to me when I've been in your office, uh, you know, talking about the whole concept of the laying on of hands. And I think that was just such a beautiful analogy because, you know, truly God made us as uh, creatures filled with his energy and as, as ambassadors of Christ, you know, I know that you often are praying for your patient because your heart is to see them heal completely and to see the progress and journey with them. And yes. you're such an encourager. And 
uh, I know that uh, I, ha I too have suffered from depression and a lot of different things in the past that I got to where I felt like it was just pain management all the time. That's just yeah. was the norm for me to live that way. And so, you know, my heart, like yours, for our viewers today is there's people that they, they're suffering from addiction, they're suffering from ADD, they're, they're not able to focus, they're suffering from maybe even um, food issues. Um, and you can speak into that in a, in a minute as well, because I know you have a background with that. But uh, relational issues, you know, when we feel defeated all the time, oftentimes it's not, it's not just a mental or emotional problem, but a physiological problem that's creating the chemical imbalances and throwing everything off. And so, you know, all of these complex things work together, just like the engine of a car and, you know, all the pieces and the moving parts, they all have to work together to go forward. And so, um, you know, I love that you bring th that philosophy of hope and healing and uh, as a servant of Christ into yeah. your practice. And, and you don't do it in an offensive way for those who, you know, don't want to hear anything about your, uh, your faith, but you live it and you walk it out. And I, I just want to commend you for that because I think it's a beautiful thing to behold and to watch you bring Jesus into the marketplace, so to speak, and into a place of healing and environment that's safe for everyone. Um, now, I know that you, go ahead. No, I, to that. I love that you recognize that because that's the heart that I had when I opened the doors here at Well Connected. Sure. What you just described is why God gave me the name Well Connected, because mm -hmm. we are literally connected to everything. And wow. the, our bodies and the way that our lives filter life is through our nervous system. So that's what I want to make sure is always optimally functioning. And that's yeah. what I want to make sure that people have an understanding about. Mm -hmm. And life just elevates when you're healthy. And it so truly, yeah, if you it truly does chronic pain, you're going to feel better. Yeah. Well, for me personally, I mean, a lot of those things that I was dealing with, uh, some of the, uh, you know, feelings of depression or oppression that were, I kept circling around this thing going, what is wrong? And I was fatigued, overweight, and, you know, I'm not 100% there, but it is a journey of, of healing. It, it take, took me years of abusing my body and trauma, many traumas that, you know, I've talked about in my story that got me to where I was. And I just am amazed at the rapid um, progression. And it's now it's been like a snowball effect where it's actually getting better and better, quicker and quicker uh, all the time. And so I'm really excited about this journey with you. But you also, you have patients literally uh, around the world. I mean, tell me, tell us about uh, where some of the patients have come to see you pre-COVID, obviously. Sure. Uh, yeah. um. So it's incredible. I mean, I, it's so funny. I was just talking with one of my business coaches the other day and I just see myself as this little girl from Iowa who, <laughs> who just happened yeah. to like, do what God said. And yeah. the blessings that have come from that have been, I mean, beyond my wildest imaginations and yeah. to have people fly from Taiwan and Dubai and France and drive in van loads from Utah, fly in from Oklahoma, wow. fly me to Canada, like mm -hmm. all the different things and all the places and all the people from all over the world. I just had a patient. It was my last patient of the day. She was on a beach in Maui. A random woman walked up to her. They struck up a conversation. She told her to come see me. And they were in Maui together. And she still to this day has no idea who that woman was. And I'm like, wow. what? I mean, people are referring me from all over the country. Yeah. And it's just because I know that I am submitted to the will of God. In yes. my life. And so people that like feel discouraged, like they're not living in their purpose. All you have to do is ask him, what does he want yeah. you to do? Because I love it. Tell you. And then when yeah. you, do, you are walking in the blessings and the anointing that he has for you. And it isn't me. It's Christ mm -hmm. through me because mm -hmm. he can get glory. And as you mentioned earlier, I love to pray with my patients. And so it's not necessarily like, let me pray for their back pain or let me pray for their headache. But like every time I get to have an encounter with them, I get to be a part of their life. And let's say their, their grandma right. or their dog is sick or their kid is going off to college and they're going to be an empty nester. I mean, I walk into all kinds of different life. Right. And yeah. I 
speak truth and joy and peace and hope into them in that moment. And the Holy Spirit is so alive and well. When people mm. come in, they say, it's different here. There's peace here. Yeah. And yeah. I, because that's the vision that I had for yeah. the place that God told me to open. And so I just love it. This is my ministry. This is where I get to do the work he has for me to do. And I never get sick of it. Yeah. As you were talking, um, I just had this picture of when we come to that place, that intersection of uh, hope and healing, you know, it, it, like I said before, that can be on many different levels and healing the whole person is such a process. It is complex. It involves um, being mentored by those who have, who were the forerunners and uh, who understand the journey and know how to help coach us along. And, and in a sense, that's exactly what you're doing. But I just see this picture of uh, the orphan child who's finally come home. Yeah. When we come to that place of knowledge, of uh, freedom, of um, uh, uh, you know affirmation and uh, healing. And so I just really love the fact that you are like a family there at Well Connected Chiropractic. And, and uh, the bigger picture is that you are connecting people for purpose and you are, um, you are connected to your kingdom purpose, not just one aspect of what you do, but all the aspects of what you do, you bring those together so beautifully. And, uh, I, I want you to talk about some of the trauma that you even experienced as, um, as a, a young girl, uh, with, food. I know that you were, you were yeah. pretty severely abused and, and yeah. uh, neglected. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and what God has, how that's been a progressive journey for you. Yeah. So, you know, unfortunately hurting people hurt people and broken mm -hmm. begets brokenness, but God is a healer mm -hmm. and healing begets healing. Amen. So, um, you know, there were circumstances in my life where I was, in a, in a, in a situation where I was locked in a bedroom and I wasn't fed and, um, it created a lot of warped mentality about the way I thought about food and I would hoard it and I would just starve myself all day and then eat mm -hmm. one meal at night because that's what I was used to. Mm -hmm. And, um, there were different circumstances where I would like do Morse code with the lights in my bedroom and then the neighbor kids would see it and they would sneak me snacks. And so the snacks mm -hmm. that I would get were the crap that they could find from their pantries, yeah. like processed food and soda, you know, pop and things like that. So mm -hmm. the sustenance that I lived on sneaking through my window was things that you can easily get addicted to because mm -hmm. it's cheap and easy and it tastes good. Well, yeah. as an adult and as a doctor, I had to really come to terms with the fact that I can't eat Doritos and drink Mountain Dew and have right. night, yeah. you know, um, you know, instinct. So food essentially can become take the place of maybe that relationship when you're abandoned, when yeah. you're being uh, not just neglected, but you were being abused by being locked up. You were, you were under what felt like uh, punishment or incarceration. Yeah. Yeah. And so for just being you and, and for no reason at all. So, or maybe being an inconvenience to someone, I don't know what the motive was, but, but oftentimes, like you said, when hurting people hurt us, then we can easily turn to something else to soothe and to cope. Yeah. But there does come a point in time where in order to break those chains and not live a limited life that is unhealthy, God will call us to be able to revisit that pain. Yep. And through a uh, well-connected chiropractic and the Blair technique, you're able to do a very exhaustive or comprehensive um consultation with people where you find out traumas and details and you're able to really help them to, I mean, for me, I was able to kind of go back and go, oh, wow, I really went through that. I went through that and acknowledge it. As we come to that intersection of hope and healing, it's often a place that doesn't feel good. And it's a place where we need others to uh, speak into our lives, to encourage us, to coach us, and to help us. The people I'm speaking of are the forerunners who've walked that journey before us. They understand the difficulties. They understand the mind traps and the even the physical um, things that will manifest on the journey. And that is exactly what you do as you are able to coach 
your patients. It is so much more than just the cracking of bones and <laughs> you know what people call it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I see this as such a beautiful picture of how Jesus meets us as the hope on our horizon and uh, will come and confront us in the places where we have to let go of the, the old things that the, the coping mechanisms, the things, you know, that bag of chips and Mountain Dew that we might have reached for before or whatever it is, it might be for somebody else, something different, sure. but whatever that emotional trigger caused us to reach for to cope, we can change that. And yeah. then we're suddenly living a life that is free, that is not marginalized like it once was, and we're growing and we're becoming and we're uh, fulfilling much greater purpose. Um, we have just a few minutes left and I want you to talk about Romans uh, eight twenty eight. I know that that's a very special scripture to you, Dr. Hafer. Will you talk about Romans eight twenty eight and how that applies to you and to the people that you serve. Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Yes. That verse has been the thing that has kept me going. And when I look back over the landscape of my mm -hmm. life and I look back and see all of the trauma and the tragedy and the heartbreak, I can see that God was with me and that he has had a purpose in every single bit of it. Because every single circumstance has led me to who I am today, which is a completely sold out Jesus lover who lays hands on people and does his healing work for his kingdom. Mm. Amen. And I relate to the same thing. He takes what the enemy means for our harm. He will turn it and he will use it for good. And I really believe that that's not just for our good, but then he takes that good that he that he used in our life to grow us, to break those chains, help us to become free and find home in him and then use it for the good of the kingdom and meaning for those around us. And so what a light you are, Dr. Hafer. I'm so proud of you. I'm just so honored to call you my friend and to have you as a, a sister in my life. You are an encourager and I love you dearly. And I'm grateful for all that you have given uh, to myself and to my husband and my family. And uh, I want people to know how they can, before we go, how can they find you and um, tell them how to connect with you. <clears throat> so, so Brenda, you are such a blessing to me too. And I just love it. Whenever I have these encounters, I call them divine appointments because mm -hmm. I just know God has set up each and every person that I get to take care of. And he decided mm -hmm. before the foundations of the earth that I was going to yeah. get to be part of their healing. So being yeah. a part of is a tremendous blessing to me. And um, I just look forward to seeing you every time you're in town. It's so much fun. Yeah. So thank you so much. And thank you get to share God's glory and to share the testimony of who he is in my life and all of the healing that he's done because he's not done with me and I have a lot more things to do. So yeah. um, if you do want to come find me, you can find me at Well Connected Cairo in Mission Viejo, California. Um, my website is wellconnectedcairo.com. And I also have a podcast. It's called Get Your Head on Straight. And I do a lot Ooh. of cool with people who want to learn about the Blair work and uh, just about understanding who they are in Christ, because the identity that I have in him is what drives me and what mm -hmm. keeps me grounded and focused. So mm -hmm. I'd love to talk to anyone. if you have any questions or comments or concerns or you're not quite sure, please reach out to me. I am an open book and I love to brag about God and what he's done. And I would love to have the opportunity to serve you if there's any way I can. And if for some reason I can't help you because you're too far away and you can't make it to me, I have a very large network. I am well connected. Yeah. <laughs> I can be somebody that can help you because I train doctors and they move all over the country and all over the world. So I would love to be able to get them connected for sure. So awesome. Well, you're a jewel and I want to encourage everybody to if struggling with uh, some physical things. Like I said, addictions, ADD, autism, whatever those things might be. And you want some good advice and uh, you want some encouragement about what uh, track you should be on to find your healing. I want you to reach out to Dr. Hafer and she just told you how to find her well-connected Cairo.org. Is that correct? Dr. And you can email her dot com yes dot com <laughs> and i'm sure she can email they can email you there as well correct yes yeah that's exactly okay right. so good so reach out to her she will point you in the direction you need to go and um i just want to thank you for taking the time to be with us today 
listen, we love you. We care about you and we care about your personal growth. And we want you to be well connected to the community around you, to the spirit of the Lord within you and to your purpose and destiny and your help. So thank you for being with us today and come and see us again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.